I come and manifest myself and I re-establish it. In our popular understanding, we know there have been various avatars, particularly of Lord Vishnu, we know the Matsya, Kurma and the great Narasimha avatar and all avatars are there. In all these avatars also the purpose was maintained that Dharma was re-established. But all these avatars were manifestations. So when Prahalada finally was asked, uh, where is Lord uh, Narasimha, is he in this pillar? He said boldly yes and the pillar was broken and Lord Narasimha appeared. And the whatever he had to do, that was done. So it is not just enough if Dharma was merely established, we have to walk the path of Dharma and show to the world what Dharma is. This was the thought of the Lord and in that purpose came this great Rama Avatara. So in this Avatara what is the speciality is, he established Dharma but he lived the life of Dharma and showed us as the example. So such a long life and such a detailed explanation of Dharma we don't find in other avatars. But before we get into even Rama or Ramayana, our first salutation has to be to Valmiki Bhagavan, the great Rishi Valmiki. Because that Rama lived and that he followed such and such dharma was known only to people who were living at that point of time. Nobody would have known otherwise. But what is the great compassion and greatness of Valmiki? He recorded it. He recorded it in his own time and produced what is known as this great text, Kavya called as Ramayana. Ramayana is said to be the Adi Kavya or the first Kavya. Kavya is a literature which has very many uh, aesthetic beauty, very many details, very many rasas. Rasas means rasa has no uh, English translation. You can say mood, you can say emotion, you can say bhava. So that brings out that in detail. That is a kavya or a great literature. So Adi Kavya means first literature. And therefore, Valmiki is the Adi Kavi. And not only that, he made sure that this uh, Kavya is sung and it is propagated and it is there eternally. He trained none other than Lava and Kusha, sons of Lord Rama, to do this and they were the first propagators of this uh, great Ramayana. And that has uh, been followed till today and it will be continued to follow. That is the power and tapas of Sage Valmiki. In this process of writing this great text Ramayana, contribution of great Valmiki is not just confined to the story of Lord Rama. It enhanced Indian culture. It enhanced Sanskrit language. The great Pandini formulated the rules and that is what is still holding the grammar uh, of this language. We know the great Pandini's contribution. But it is said by experts, anybody who doesn't even know Sanskrit, who reads through Valmiki Ramayana over a period of time, he gets acquainted because the words used by Valmiki are found in every Indian language, including Tamil. So they are able to relate to it. So, such a vast corpus of words, such a vast corpus of literary beauty and not to talk about the growth of other languages through this and ultimately Bhakti. Everything is a great, great contribution of Valmiki. So, our first salutation to Bhagavan Valmiki. Rama and Ramayana are inseparable aspects of Indian lives and culture. Narrative of Ramayana has shaped the Indian minds right from the beginning. If you trace back the Indian history to whatever time you can trace back, it is always joined with Ramayana only. In the earliest, see, 
Rama walked through all parts of India. His direct association is there. But Ramayana has become the part and parcel of our lives. It is not in just uh, last few centuries or last one millennia. From, from very, very uh, many, many millennia ago also. The Sangam literature of Tamil, which is much before even the uh, Tamil Ramayana was composed, they give references of various instances in Ramayana and Mahabharata also. So it is part and parcel of every corner of India. And it continues to inspire every generation in every art form, in every drama, in every poetry, in every sculpture, in every art, Ramayana is definitely visible. See, songs and serials and movies continuously come based on Ramayana. We knew in uh, 1980s we had this Ramananda Sagar's great serial, uh, Ramayana, which was a very uh, one of the basis for a great cultural revolution in India. Later, when all the satellite televisions came and the liberals were saying that, you know, all that worked in 1980s and then there was the Rama Janma Bhumi movement, all those things there, that time. But all those things will not work out now. But we saw when the, uh, during the COVID time, when the serial was re-telecast in 2020, it got more viewership than before. So, that Ramayana will continue and believe me, it is going to come in, it will come in big way in, uh, in uh, cinemas again, 500 years later, 1000 years later also, Ramayana will be there. Valmiki himself will, says that till the end of, uh, as long as the rivers are there, mountains are there, Ramayana will be there. So if Ramayana is not in the popular opinion of the people, you can assume that the world has come to an end. That's for sure. And there are various uh, versions of Ramayana. We'll come to that. Not only various versions of Ramayana, the grand authors of Ramayana in each and every language, all are inspired by Lord Rama. All are inspired by Valmiki Ramayana. What is interesting is, all are Rama Bhaktas. That is given, that is the, uh, their identity. But if you go into their background, language, caste, community, they are from all, uh, all types of caste and community and background. So what is the point that I, we are trying to arrive at is, Rama equally attracts everyone. It is not confined to a particular language speaking people or particular community or caste. Erutachan in Malayalam, he belonged to the fisherman community. The great Kamban who wrote Ramayana and Tamil, Weaver, Ranganatha Ramayana in Telugu, Brahmins have done that, Tulsidas we know. Bhavartha Ramayana by Ekanath, uh, Krithivasi Ramayana, the Ramayana of Assamis, which is even before Tulasidas and Bengali, Madhavakandi, all these people, everybody coming from all different backgrounds, all their common theme is Rama and Ramayana only. Rama and Ramayana are just not confined to India. He is a universal hero. Because Rama is a repository of all values and all these values are universal, how can you confine it to only one particular nation? The entire Southeast, if you find a common thread, it is Ramayana culture. The versions of Ramayana are there in Burma, in Laos, in Cambodia, Malaysia, not to talk of Sri Lanka and uh, Nepal, Philippines. Indonesia. Indonesia has the largest Muslim population and the celebration of Ramayana is highest there outside India, even today. When one of the earlier Prime Ministers of Indonesia was asked as to why they are still celebrating Ramayana, he said, we have just changed our religion, we cannot change our ancestors, he said. So that is the cultural unity. See. Buddhism, Jainism, they were all Avedic uh, religions. But in the Dasharatha Jataka tale of Buddhism, 
Ramayana is there. So Rama is considered as a one of the Bodha Sattvas by Buddhists. Jains consider him as one of the Shalaka Purushas. There is Guru Gobindji's version of Ramayana also, Sikhism. So therefore, he is truly, truly a universal hero. At least for us to accept him as our national hero, there should not be any inhibition. See, that is why we say, when we say Jai Sri Ram, it is glory to Lord Rama. Anybody and everybody can say that. Even if you are not willing to consider Rama as a god, fine. But that Rama is a great and universal hero, that cannot be denied. So what is wrong for you to say the glory of your own ancestor who has shaped your life? It may be that you have shifted your religion or changed your religion and you want to worship the Supreme in a different way. That is fine. But the very Rama actually inspires everybody. And that should be the stance that everybody should take. As we said, there are various versions of Ramayana. The source of all is the Valmiki Ramayana. Whatever Valmiki has said is the absolute truth. As it was revealed to him by sage Narada and the great epic which was written in a big way, each and every minute detail of it is correct and proper. What we see in Valmiki Ramayana is a very bold and straightforward approach. Since he composed Ramayana in the time of Lord Rama himself, he is able to portray Rama as the supreme most of human being, a great human being, a perfected human being. In fact, the question of Valmiki itself is asked as to who is that human who has all perfections? We will see that. What is the question that he is asking? But by the time Mahakavyas came, and there are other versions of Ramayana which came later, as I said, very many people, you cannot say that if there are thousand devotees, if there are a lack of devotees, everybody will be inspired Rama and everybody will be wanting to compose something on Rama. You cannot deny that. So what is important is that all are inspired and have bhakti towards Rama. So very Bhavabhuti, Kalidasa's Raghuvamsha and very many plays in Sanskrit, these have come from time to time. All the regional languages also developed because of Ramayana. The Bhakti movement started much later. It started with the Arvas and that time itself is before the common era. But as a Mahakavya, the Kamba Ramayana came first, which is in 10th or 12th century in Tamil. By the time Kamba Ramayana came, Rama was already an established divinity. So Kampan titled his Ramayana as Ramavataram, his avatar. And then came other Ramayanas, as I said, Ranganatha Ramayana in Telugu and Mulla Ramayana. Telugu has two Mahakavyas. A great poet has also wrote Mulla Ramayana, then Ramayana in Assamese, in Bengali, the great Ramacharitamanas. Bhavartha Ramayana in Marathi, in Gujarati, they have, in Kannada, there is a big prose on Ramayana. In Konkini manuscripts, there are Ramayana. Malayalam's original big literature. So, everywhere the first great literature of that particular language is usually Ramayana. Even in Tamil, though there are Sangam literatures which are centuries or millennia before Ramayana also, the rich corpus of Tamil language as we use today is a contribution of Kamba. It is a great contribution of Kamba. In these various versions of Ramayana, why is it that we see that even in a play like Julius Caesar, which is a grand narrative, there are the popular version is that of uh, Shakespeare, but there are other uh, plays and uh, those who have even written before Shakespeare about Julius Caesar because it is a grand narrative. Once a grand narrative is there, that will inspire people to write plays about it or poetry about it from time to time. Ramayana is both, both aesthetic and didactic. That means it is very instructive. It tells us how to lead our lives. Very instructive. It is full of aesthetic beauty. When this is there, why will not anybody get inspired? 
and all of them have that license to make slight changes here or there based on their inspiration which is very much a reflection of the the time that they live in the cultural aspects that they are undergoing they have all there but the basic bhakti bhava is there that is most important the basic storyline does not change in all the stories uh, rama is the son of dasaratha rama is married to sita and rama killed ravana and bharata uh, ruled on behalf of ram all these things will be there but minor details will be alterations will be there change will be there as we said it is mainly based on the reflection of the space and time the region the local culture and the time in which they were living all this has to play a part there for example in valmiki ramayana the janaka announces that uh, whoever is uh, uh, is able to string that bow and uh, he will be uh, sita will be given as in marriage to that person rama hears this and he does that act so that means rama has definitely a feeling for marrying sita this much is there but there is no meeting of rama or sita that is given in valmiki ramayana but the fact is that rama has a feeling for sita is established by this and this is taken up later and that one day before rama and sita meet is given in kamba ramayana it is there explained in detail in tulasidas ramayana pushpa vatika prasangam is a very big uh, chapter by itself and the root for that is earlier given in some by other poets also so this is a beautiful thing that we have to enjoy actually dasharatha councils all the members of all the caste and community before he is willing to pass on the throne to rama when he decides that it is his rajya and accordingly rama will come next and there need not be any consultation in this hierarchy but still this is the way that democracy was practiced within this also that dasharatha calls everybody and he is able to discuss with them because he says i will have a prejudice because he is my son you tell me whether he is fit for it this is the magnanimity of dasharatha and all of them unanimously say in later versions of ramayana dasharatha counsels only the ministers because probably at that point of time that magnanimity and the overall way in which all the people were equally treated probably was not there so like that there are some versions uh, which are reflective of the time and space in valmiki ramayana sita is held by the hair by ravana and taken away in kamba ramayana the whole parnasala or the hut or the hermitage where they are there along with that uh, earth it is taken away ravana doesn't touch sita okay this is reflective of the culture with which and the refinement with which a, a great person will live and that was reflected upon ravana also that's all this is what we need to understand but ravana had that power to control us mind and not let loose even in a way of kama yet touch sita and not get affected by his curse it is as given as in valmiki ramayana so these are very minute and minor surpalaka comes in a beautiful form in kamba ramayana she comes in a rakshasi form in the original it doesn't matter either way rama is going to reject you understand so these are very very small and minor differentiations that are there sometimes the versions may change for uh, inspirational additions like kambaramana has the story of lord narasimha why because 
His devata is Nasma. In fact, the word Kamban comes from the word Kambam in, in Tamil, which means Stambam in Sanskrit. Stambam is pillar. And they all are the traditional worshippers of Lord Narasimha. So he brings in Lord Narasimha avatara as Vibhishna telling Ravana. What is wrong in it? It, in, it only adds to the bhakti aspect of that uh, poetry. Similarly, uh, the instructions can be given. For giving in, there is a, this uh, Lakshman Reka that is a very very popular version. This Lakshman Reka is not given in original Valmiki Ramayana. This Lakshman Reka is not there in Gamba Ramayana. This Lakshman Reka is indicated only in Tulasi Ramayana much later. But it comes directly in Ranganatha Ramayana. It comes in Prithivasa Ramayana of Bengali. Nothing wrong but that Lakshmana drew a line and Sita was, uh, should not cross it. It is only giving instruction that you must be very careful about maintaining your discipline, something like that. And that the power cannot be even be equaled by uh, that power that Tapas that Lakshmana has cannot be uh, overpowered by Ravana. This, this is a message. So nothing wrong with this. Glorification of Rama. That is, so once the bhakti comes, you want to glorify Rama, so certain additions can be there. You know, there is a episode where they say monkeys are, the Vanaras are building the bridge using great rocks. And there is a squirrel uh, that also does its small service. That uh, it is able to give soft sand on that rock by, uh, it will immerse itself in the sea water, come and roll on the beach sand. And all the sand that it collects in its small body, it will go and deposit on the rocks so that Rama when he walks he should not feel any hardship this is a very beautiful thought a very beautiful so Rama is able to watch this and he is patting the squirrel this is the story where is the original of this it comes in Ranganatha Ramayana but where did he get from it comes from Alvar's song actually and who are Alvar's they are persons who are immersed immersed in the complete realization and bhakti and for them in this in their heart this flash will be there and these flashes are not ordinary flashes of their thinking it is based on their inspiration it is based on their self-absorption so if this story is there that Rama is able to even graze a squirrel if he is able to graze even small small creatures will he not graze all of us and this is also showing the easy quality of Rama so to this so that is how uh, these uh, various versions came comes but what will be the effect of certain diversions over a period of time even those poets who wrote this they might not know we all know this great Shabari Moksha Shabari is a lady belonging to the hunter clan she is in the uh, she is in the ashrama of Matanga Muni she was a great tapasvi she had all the great uh, contact and achara, that means um, getting up early in the morning, doing puja, doing tapas, everything is according to the perfection given in the Shastra she used to do. And she is waiting for Rama as, uh, as guided by her guru. And she gives fruit to Rama, this is the story. But nowhere in Valmiki it is said that she put that fruit in her mouth, made it juta and then gave to Rama. But whoever, and if you trace it, then this also has this. But why is the story given? This story again is given by a person who is having immense bhakti for Rama to show that that the bhakti of the Shavari is that she will make sure that the fruit is alright and the greatness of Rama is that he will accept that. So this, this is the beautiful story this is, beautiful narration this is. But what happens further? Later this got modified into when Shavari is giving like that, Lakshmana is angry. And then Rama pacifies Lakshmana and he says the bhakti is important. This is fine. Later version says Lakshmana not only got angry, he took his word also. Okay, he took his word and uh, he threatened Shabari. Then, then Rama pacified and gives him the instructions. This is relatable because we can say uh, Lakshmana is impulsive character and Rama it is relatable. But where does this all lead to? When they read a version of Ramayana, in a school in West or somewhere, you know what the questions they will get? This is the episode. Rama took the sword. Uh, sorry, Lakshmana took the sword and Rama pacified him. Imagine yourself to be Shabari. 
what would your reaction to be when Lakshmana takes this word? Suppose if, now these deviations, if these are there, what we need to understand is, in the modern day and context, very many people with very many agenda, they distort Ramayana. This is not acceptable. That is why I said, all the people who have given all the versions before we see the common thread of bhakti. If that is not there, we can reject that versions. But how do we know that? That is why we have to follow that along with bhakti. The inculcation of Ramayana in a young age to a boy or a girl must be inculcated along with bhakti. Not, we need not even give a motive or agenda. Suppose if a person says, feminist version of Sita, and she is going to give the version of Ramayana according to how she sees, because she has suffered in her life, and she will project that on Sita, and she will give her own version of Ramayana. Okay. Now, are you, are you, uh, you must have a broad vision to see the overall picture. You cannot see just the tip of your nose and say, I know everything about Ramayana. Who is, that is why we said, who is competent to write even the Smritis and Nitihasas and Purana? A great Tapasvi. A person who is immersed in the knowledge of the self. Only they can do. So these various versions of Ram, uh, Rama and Ramayana have to be celebrated. Every country celebrates. As I said, Cambodia, Laos, everybody celebrates. But the basic theme should not be missed. And the basic bhakti should not be missed in this. Now, why is Rama a universal hero? Why do we like a person? For all gods, we have respect. We have a great reverence. We have bhakti. But when it comes to Rama, with all these things, our heart also melts. It becomes, that's why the great Sukha, when he comes to the portion of saying Rama story, he cannot say, because his throat is choked. It is Sukha Brahma, who very freely says Krishna's story, uh, pages after pages. But when it comes to Rama's story, it is such a thing that it touches everybody's heart. Why? Because, why, do, why does a person like another person? A person likes another person based on his gunas. A nice guna or a nice quality if another person has, you like him. Why does a person dislike another person? It is based on the other guna or the bad quality. Now, if there is going to be a repository of all the good qualities in its extreme form, plus more, that is Lord Rama. He is the repository of all the qualities in its infinite form. The epic begins with Narada asking question to, uh, sorry, Valmiki asking question to Narada. Is there any person who is, and he gives 16 qualities there. All these qualities, every one of us will like. Viryavan, Gunavan, who has all the good characteristics, who is valorous, who is Atmavan, who is self-realized, who is without jealousy, who has won over anger, but whose anger even God's fear when provoked, who is having a pleasant look, whose words are full of truth, who always walks on the path of Dharma, like that you, he talks about just, not just 16, even one quality we are not able to understand, 16 qualities he is asking. See, if you take Ra Raja Harishchandra, we see that he may have great qualities, but truthfulness is established by him. You take Yudhishthira, very many great qualities are there, but his patience is outstanding. But, you take Rama and take any quality, that is, it's, it's there in full in him. He is truthfulness, patience, uh, warfare, uh, pleasant talking, self-control. So, like that, he gives all the qualities and says, who is there? To which Narada says, he is there still now, ruling Ayodhya. And he says, not only the 16 qualities, he gives 64 qualities. Narada in his answer gives 64 qualities and he says, this is what I can say. This much only I can say. But like we say, in for Brahman, there are Ananta Guna. Like that, the same thing is given by Valmiki to Ramayana later as 
Ananta Kalyana Guna. That means infinite qualities. Same thing is elaborated in Ayodhya Kanda, the first Sarga. You go through that, it is quality after quality after quality. Even as he is practicing archery, when an old person comes, he will stop and inquire with him. He will initiate conversation. He will not express his woes. He will not advertise his woes. If anybody talks anything wrong to him, he will first introspect whether I have done something wrong. And very beautifully, he knows how to convey what, what thing at what point of time. He can ride a horse and elephant very easily. He, is, uh, he makes everybody satisfied by his look. It goes on and on and on. There is uh, one guna, if you take it, can go on forever. You know, that type of all the repository of qualities. So he is like an ocean. An ocean has both the greatness as well as his pleasant nature. In, by, when you go to the ne uh, nearby the ocean, you feel very pleasant. You feel very pleasant. But you cannot understand the depth of the ocean. The vast magnitude of the ocean. Rama is like that. He is very pleasant. He is very amiable. He is there with you. He is very, what is known as Sulabha in Sanskrit, very simple. He comes to you as a simple, yet he maintains his grand nature. This type of an extreme of all qualities in all its contradiction is what is Lord Rama. He is both hard and simple. He is masculine and feminine. The way in which he cries when he loses Sita, you have to see that. He is the extremity of all dharmas and beyond all dharmas. He is very dignified yet very pleasant. He is God and he is human. So when this extremities of Lord Rama is presented this way, we are not able to understand. That's what it is. We will not be able to understand. You can only stand aghast. And that is what everybody does. That is why Sukha says there is nobody that can be equivalent to Rama. There cannot be past, present or future. There cannot be anybody equivalent of Rama. All others can be measured by the standards set by Rama. You can say this person is very great. 50% of Rama. 75% of Rama. 80% of Rama. That's all you can say. So in this extreme now forget about Rama. All the other characters in Ramayana also, they are idealistic. That is why Ramayana is idealistic. King means Dasharatha. All these qualities definitely apply to Rama. We can even forget Rama. Ideal king is Dasharatha. Ideal guru is Vashishta. Ideal mother is Kaushalya. Ideal brothers are Lakshmana, Bharata and Shatrupana in different ways. Ideal Bhakta is Hanuman. Ideal villain is Ravana. And we cannot talk about Sita. Because Sita is equivalent of Rama. Valmiki says, Sita Yaha Charitam Mahat. I have composed the great Charitra of Sita, he says. That was probably one of the titles that was originally suggested also. Epitome of everything that is feminine, not only that, like Rama, various, all the qualities in equal measure. So, these characteristics, characters itself is very much for us to conceive. What we see in all the character, people means people of Ayodhya. There is nobody greater than that. Um, what we see in all these characters is, in Ramayana we see the characters, the kings, the Rishis, Vanaras, Rakshasas, various characters that we see. We don't see as much sannyasins or renunciates in the garb of sannyasa as we understand now. Not only in Ramayana, much later in Mahabharata also we don't see that because the ashrama of sannyasa gained much popularity after Buddhism came and then later Adi Shankaracharya streamlined it from Hinduism point of view. So it came much much later. 
But what is interesting in Ramayana is remarkably all the characters show a sense of renunciation. Of course we know Rama that the moment Kaikeyi said that it is not for you, he tells in, in Kambaravan it comes, Mother why should you say that father is saying, even if you say I will go, he says. Kaikeyi is stunned, Kaikeyi is stunned, Lakshmana is stunned, that is different but Kaikeyi is stunned. Rama we know, but what about Bharata? What about people of Ayodhya who will not celebrate anything till Rama returns? That is people of Ayodhya. So we see a remarkable sense of renunciation throughout Ramayana. Throughout Ramayana it is. So since Rama has set the highest standard in all the characters that he has played. King, brother, son, husband friend, warrior, any anything you take. He has set the highest standards. And the extremity which with Rama will perform dharma of that character is he goes to the extreme and one step ahead of that. So we will not be able to understand. So when you are able to mix match all these characters, then only the confusion and apparent contradiction comes. So much is talked about Rama's gunas throughout and yet, critics of Rama catch hold of these three things. One is slaying of Vali. One is the Agni Pravesha of Sita. And ultimately, Sita Parityaga, that is after the coronation and after staying in Ayodhya for long. We, in our recent class or group discussion, we had this discussion about a great sentence by David Starr Jordan. He says, the nature of any perfection is that it should appear as imperfection. So, ultimate perfection in all ways, there cannot be anything beyond drama and therefore, of the 24,000 verses that are given in Ramayana, these things are the things that catch the eyes of the critics. So it only proves, in fact, the greatness of Rama in the first place. Okay. That means it is the highest evolved creature that shows the imperfection. Here it is apparent imperfection, apparent contradiction. We will see in the time available whatever we can see. First is, uh, so you have to understand three things basically. You have to understand the role of a friend in Vali Vada. You have to understand the uh, role of husband in Agni Pravesha. You have to understand the role of a king in Sita Parityaga. That Rama hid behind the tree and shot Vali is first explicitly given in Kambaramayana only. It is not given in the original explicitly like that. Though, Obviously, Vali was not watching when Rama shot the arrow, but Rama was there in front of him at a distance. Vali was involved in the fight of Sugriva, that is all clear. Rama shot the arrow when Vali and Sugriva were fighting. Vali is asking all the questions to Rama before his life passes away and so many questions he asks. That is why I said Valmiki is a straightforward and a very bold author. He has given it as it is. He has not hidden anything. See this can be slightly altered if you want to just project Rama as a god, right? If you want to project uh, Draupadi can be ma married to just one brother of the Pandavas and still the uh, Mahabharata story can go. But that Draupadi married five brothers is what is written by Veda Vyasa. They did not shy away from it. What is there has to be presented as it is was their stance. So Vali asks very many questions to Rama. When I was not looking at you, you shot. You have got into infamy because of this. You will carry it throughout your life. And if you wanted uh, Sita, I would have brought him, brought her just like this from Ravana. 
and uh, uh, you know you have no right to punish me it is not your kingdom uh, we are all monkeys so many things he says rama patiently listens and he answers them point by point first of all he says you have no right to say that i don't have the right to give punishment we belong to the ikshvaku clan where bharata is the ruler of the whole world now and he is in charge of the city there and he has nominated me for in charge of all the beings protection in the forest and that's what he has been doing all along why should he otherwise kill all the rakshasas why should he kill everybody along the way i have the right to give punishment and you are worthy of punishment first of all you are worthy of punishment wali being in the position of the king had to rule properly and he had to set high standards for others to follow he unjustly took sugriva's wife who had to be treated like his daughter in law not only that sugriva had not done any mistake even when he was with wali he was kept suppressed when he was driven away by wali was also he was totally totally tortured and he had very few companions anybody else would have committed suicide if sugriva treatment was meted out lucky thanks to hanuman and others by his side sugriva was there sugriva was a great soul also and this is worthy of punishment this is not how it should be done and who has the right to give punishment i have the right to give punishment i will decide i as the king i can punish and if i don't punish it is wrong i will incur sin and rama quotes manusmriti there rama quotes manusmriti there and then the all that we can think is that uh, you know he might have been given a chance or he could have come in front and shot all this is very complicated first of all as a friend he has given a word to sugriva that he will finish wali within that day based on the narratives given and based on his promise never ever can rama go back on his word that wali is worthy of punishment everybody may agree only the mode of giving punishment right that has so many complications <laughs> Sugriva himself seeks that Wali needs to be removed, and Rama promises that. And then the fight goes on. Rama shoots. If Rama had come in front of Wali, they are talking about Wali's, uh, you know, strength and all. He will get half the power. All that will not uh, uh, be applicable to Rama. With one arrow, he can do everything. Okay, all that power he has. but if he comes in front of wali what if wali surrenders to rama if wali is says even one word if anybody is going to ask for surrender rama is not going to deny and what happens to his word to sugriva then that is worthy of punishment and that he has to meet is end like that is decided it is decided it is only the mode of punishment is a matter of detail and he has given to his friend a word that before today it will be done for all the wrongs that he has done to you in agreement in with his asking for it okay let there be even truth what if then Ra ravana see rama has sought the help of sugriva only for the search of sita nothing else rama does not require anybody's help to defeat ravana it is not wali's mercy that he will bring uh, sita ravana anything like nobody's help Ra rama requires there but you know wali with all his uh, characteristics he had made a truce with ravana ravana before what if wali runs away or joins ravana or for that uh, sake of argument uh, he brings sita also from ravana there will be a different turn in the story and the purpose of rama coming and uh, defeating ravana and absolving sita of all her uh, not absolving bringing back sita all this would have been there so so many complications are there if there was a direct confrontation he calculated all these things and did whatever has to be done at that point of time fully knowing fully knowing 
that questions and other things will be raised upon this and it will be carrying on. It will be carrying for ages together. Ultimately what is important is Wali understands all these things. But what is interesting is if you read through the portion of Wali's uh, dialogue with Rama later, it comes like a stuti. It comes like a praise of Lord Rama, everything. Even as he asks the questions, all the questions comes as whatever is the subtle point set in Vedanta, that, that is the interpretation of Wali's words there. All that apart, Rama now is ready to revive Wali. Wali finally says, I may be revived, I will live. But and someday I have to die. That death, will it be from your hands? I don't know. Let me die like this, he says. Let me die like this, he says. So, there is, and Hanuman and others praise Rama for killing Wali. So, Hanuman will not uh, praise anybody like that. And that too for killing Wali. So, extremity of friendship is shown for the sake of friendship. Anything and everything he will do, even take apparent blame upon himself. Next is this Agni Pravesha. It is wrongly called as Agni Pariksha. It's not Pariksha. Pariksha means Rama keeps test to Sita. It is absurd to say that. Throughout Ramayana, Rama's and Sita's love and affinity is unparalleled. Ramayana is the only love story where the love keeps on increasing after marriage. Nowhere else it can happen. Everywhere, love culminates in marriage and after this, there's, there's a deterioration. Here, the marriage starts after love, uh, sorry, love starts after marriage and that love keeps on increasing. Such a time that they have in forest and Ra Rama has earlier said that he will always protect Sita because of four reasons, he says. Sita is a woman. Sita is my wife. Sita is somebody who is my, who loves me dearly and Sita is somebody who has surrendered to me. All these four reasons are there, I will never leave Sita, he says. He will never, okay. And that Sita is pure need not be uh, proven with the words of Vibhishana and Hanuman, they are there. Anuman has gone and seen. Vibhishna knows. Always. He knows. That need not be the case of proof. Rama's heart knows about Sita. Sita's heart knows about Rama. No other proof is required. Both of their hearts know each other. Where is the question of doubt? Where is the question of doubting Sita's chastity? Rama, who has been a very thoughtful character throughout, suddenly will he become impulsive like that? And yet, he says such harsh words, such harsh words, it is there. See, Sita is coming to meet Rama with all the emotions, so much emotions. She has been away from him for more than 10 months. That eagerness is there, that all people are there, that shyness is there, that all the dukkha that she has carried for all these months, that is there. And slowly she is coming and Rama said, let her come, into, come out in the open, he says. She comes. When he comes, he says, I just, uh, you know, wanted to uh, defeat uh, Ravana and prove myself and I have done my duty. Uh, I have no interest in, uh, you know, uh, taking you back as it is. You can go anywhere. You can take refuge in Lakshmana, Bharata or anybody. They will not take care of you like that. He says such harsh words. Now think of it, a person who has been absolutely objective throughout the scriptures, will he suddenly change like this? This itself must be a thought for us as such. It is not so. See, Sita as I said is equal to Rama in all aspects. And Rama believes Sita should not have any of this, any of, even a doubt of uh, a, a thing about her. See here there are people who are what to say? Vijana. Vijana means who are uh, monkeys and bears and rakshasas. They are all there. Okay. In in uh, in that crowd. Even here she should not feel anything actually. Because she is above all purity. Okay. But imagine if she is going to carry this when she comes to Ayodhya when she is with her own people. That is not right. 
So the greatness of Sita has to be proven to the world for which the whole focus was on Sita at that point of time. He took the focus upon himself. He took the focus upon himself. Such harsh words. See, a lady was sleeping in the house. She is, uh, she has switched on the water pump, motor. Okay. And the overhead tank has filled. But unconsciously, she was sleeping actually. She put on the motor and she slept. And she was in deep sleep. The water is overflowing. And she is not hearing. The house owner, she is in a, she is a tenant. The house owner hears this. So he is agitated because, you know, <laughs> his water is going, his current is going. And unnecessary it is. So he comes there to tell this lady that what are you doing? He comes with that little bit of anger, obviously, rightful anger only. But he comes away and uh, he sees that he is knocking the door and she is not getting up. She is in deep sleep, actually, very deep sleep. At that same time, the husband comes. Instantly, he understands what has happened. He knows that she has switched on the motor and the water is overflowing and the house owner has come with this intent only. They are otherwise good people, but he has understood. He bangs open the door, he, he uh, you know, throws, uh, he uh, knocks the door with such uh, loud noise. He wakes her up in a very rude way and starts abusing and shouting her, you don't, are you asleep, are you Kumbhakarna? Don't you know the water is there, you, do, you don't have any respect for electricity or uh, water resource or anything and he starts shouting. He, they, they are not like this actually, they are a very close couple. But before the house owner could say anything, he abuses her in such a way, the house owner says, Sir, sir, why are you doing this? It is just that she has slept, she has missed. No, don't shout. Okay, okay, anyway, you know, the matter is resolved. <laughs> resolved. Now, how will she feel when she is being shouted in front of a third person like this? It is the exact feeling at that point of time. But what did this husband do? He took all the focus upon himself, by which she is actually not having any crime at all. The point in this example is that she was unconscious of it. She was left. She does not have mistake. It was not Sita's mistake that she went to uh, Ravana. So Ravana says such harsh words. Sita got awakened. She said, come on Lakshmana, lit a fire here. She came to her old form. This is her old form. Then she enters the fire and comes out uh, unscathed. Ne never it has happened before like this. She comes out unscathed. Now, the moment she entered fire, for a moment even Rama was taken aback. Rama was taken aback. Oh my God, what words came out of my work? For a moment he thought, Gods could not take this. All the gods appeared. All the gods appeared and said, Sir, this we cannot take. What are you doing? There is a limit for your drama. There is a limit for everything. Why are you doing this to Sita? They asked. Then Rama very innocently, but truly he says, Atmanam Manusham Manye. Who am I? Who am I? Don't. I am just a human being. Son of Dasharatha. They say, No, 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 no. You are Lord Vishnu. And Sita is Goddess Lakshmi. That's what they say. And Dasharatha appears. Dasharatha appears and says to Sita, You know Lord Rama. Because Rama says, Ananya hi Maya Sita Bhaskarena Yatha Prabha. Sita is indivisible from me just as the sun's rays are indivisible from sun. And she also says that in a different context. Rama also says that is their bonding. That is their, they know each other. Nobody else uh, need to give any certificate for that. Dashratha says, Sita, you know now why Rama has done like this. It is only to show your chastity to the world. And then Rama says, I will never even think of even renouncing Sita. Now this is the word that he says there. So you understand, as a husband, how he goes to the extreme, superhuman efforts to revive Sita first, to retrieve Sita and goes one step further to show the greatness of Sita to the world. This forms, so suppose if you are said like this, one word uh, in Raghukul, in, in Tulsi Ramayana, they say, Pran Jaya Par Vachanna Jaya. One word he gives means that will not go. He says, I will never renounce Sita. 
then how can he renounce Sita later? How can he send her away to forest later? So the third thing about Sita Parityaga is fully controversial. When I say controversial, not going by the basic line of the story. Because in the first Zarga itself, uh, Valmiki has given the knowledge to Lava and Kusha. That means Lava and Kusha are there. Sita is there. All that is there. But the way in which uh, the Uttarakhanda is compiled or interpolated, there are so many, so many versions of that. So many unconnected stories are there. Even stories relating to Mahabharata are there. That means the composition and the edition and the interpolation of that has come long, uh, long after that. So you cannot say by the popular version that uh, this washerman and other stories are all not given in the original thing. But what we have to understand here is that Rama's role as a king, even today when the politicians, even the worst of the politicians, when they want to do the prachar or what you call the political rallies, they say we will bring Rama Rajya. Rajya means Rama Rajya. In Rama Rajya, there was no hunger, there was no child death, there was no famine, there was no... Everything was perfect. That means the king was perfect, the rule was perfect, the people were perfect because of the king. If the rule of the king is perfect, that kingdom is perfect. So the rule of the king is like that and he establishes his kingship. Even as Sita was in the forest and he is there, he is shown to be living the same life as Sita. So his role as husband has the same identification with Sita. But his role as a, as a king is different. This is how we need to understand. And how Sita reached Valmiki's ashrama, there are various things to it. It is not because of any suspicion or anything. Then again she has to come back and prove herself by all this. It, then Ramayana becomes a joke. Then. That is not the case here. So, in all the ways you see, Sita went through Agni Pariksha only once. Rama is going through the test of fire from that time. And every time he comes out and states actually. That is the greatness of Rama. Now finally, we said, the aim of Ramayana is just not Dharma, it is Brahman also. And our Swamiji's interpretation of Ramayana from Vedantic point of view, it's outstanding. That which is given in God symbolism, in fact one of the earlier union ministers of uh, India also, he wrote a letter to Swamiji that never ever he has seen such an interpretation of Ramayana. Ramayana as a story has to be felt, enjoyed at every stage. But overall there is a beautiful symbolism of how a Jeevatma reaches Paramatma. How you get the glory back. See, Dasharatha is a self-controlled person and he is uh, in his uh, family. The four brothers are born. Rama is the eldest. Rama represents the Paramatma or the Supreme Self. Sita represents the Jeevatma or the individual self which is all of us. As long as the focus of Sita was on Rama, everything was alright, whether she was in Ayodhya or in the forest, she was extremely happy. But then, there was a golden deer and Sita's focus went there for a moment. And what is this golden deer? Golden deer is the material and sensual aspects of the world. They are golden because it is charming. They are a deer because it is fleeting, fast. So the sense enjoyments come and go very fast and you, the focus goes there. Then she is captivated and held captive by Ravana with 10 senses. That means you become a captive of your own ego. You are in that prison. And then what does the individual do? Sita does. She does tapas in Ashokavana. Shoka means grief. Ashoka means no grief. By doing tapas and yearning for union with Rama, she is doing tapas. So at that stage, at that stage, you have no grief. You don't have the positive bliss of realization, but you are free from all the agitations in the world. You have no grief. That is symbolized by Ashokavana. And in that yearning, who comes as assurance? Hanuman. Hanuman represents the Sadguru. Anuman is the Guru. Guru is the link between Jivatma and Paramatma and once Hanuman enters Ramayana, it is only auspiciousness everywhere. In fact, Hanuman's glory cannot be talked. Hanuman after he comes, there is only, he, you know, he saves the life of Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, Bharata, everybody. So it is only, only, only auspiciousness. Sugriva, 
auspiciousness and that glory of Hanuman, he represents the Guru. And then the Lanka is burnt for such a person means one who is absorbed in that for him the materiality and the sensuality are burnt as it were. They don't have any value for it anymore. The three brothers of Lanka, Ravana, Kumbhakarna and Vibhishna represent the Sattva, Rajas and Tamas qualities. Vibhishna surrender to Rama represents that the Sattva goes into trans Sattva. While the other two Kunas, Rajas and Tamas has to be unhighlighted. So Ravana and Kumbhakarna, Ravana represents Rajas, Kumbhakarna represents Tamas. When they are finished, Sattva goes to trans Sattva. That is the state of uh, realization that is also indicated there. And in this side, Rama collected the monkey forces. Monkeys represent the thought forces. They were under Vali, who is lust, representative of lust. They were brought under Sugriva, who is representative of a self-controlled person. And with the thought forces are united and channelized, you can cross the ocean of delusion, the sea of likes and dislikes. And then there is a burning of killing of Ravana, that means the ego is annihilated. Sita is united with Rama through the ordeal of fire, that means by you are purified by the knowledge of fire. You are purified by the knowledge of fire and self-realization happens. Such a wonderful uh, symbolism that the Ramayana talks about how the self, individual self has fallen and how the individual self can be revived. Both the state and the path are given in Ramayana. Ultimately, lastly, what is our relationship to Rama? Our relationship to Rama, Rama not only shows all the qualities of the humans, in the ultimate perfection and dharma, he also shows his own peculiar quality, specific quality which is only for him, which is to give refuge to one who surrenders, that only he can give. The whole Ramayana, every kanda can be explained from surrender point of view. The special quality is that he is a refuge for all. So, ultimate surrender and the best form of surrender is um, explained in Yutta Kanda where Vibhishna surrenders to Rama. When Vibhishna surrenders to Rama, all the aspects of surrender perfectly fit in there. And this we have explained uh, before uh, when we studied the Isha Vasya Upanishad. But what Rama says there is very interesting. He says, Sakrudeva Prapannaya Tavasmiti Chayachate Abhayam sarva bhutebhyo dadam yetat vratam mama To him who seeks refuge in me saying once, just once, I am yours, tava asmi. I give him protection from all beings. This is my resolve. This is my vrata. This is my solemn pledge. So all that we need to do is only one thing. Say only once. Just say how you feel and all is different. Just say only once. Uh, Rama, I belong to you, that's all. And he says, that very moment, I am bound to give him protection. So he, is, he has said that. So what else do we require? So this is called as the Charma Shloka. Charma Shloka is not exactly the last shloka, but the culminating shloka of Ramayana, the experts and all the great scholars have said, this is the shloka where he says, after this he says, let not Vibhishna, even if Ravana comes, this is my stance. Forget, because that, that uh, thing is about Vibhishna joining Rama. So he says, even once if a person says, I am yours, it is my bounden duty to give protection. Okay. And he tells, even if Ravana is standing outside, this is my stance, he says. Yadiva Ravana Swayam. Not just for Vibhishna, even if Ravana comes, this is my stance. So all that we need to do is that uh, we need to just say once Lord Rama and surrender unto him. That's all. We are taken care of. So on the auspicious occasion of Rama Naomi, we again invoke the grace of Lord Rama for all and surrender at his lotus feet. Jai Shri Ram. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam
तमेवशिष्य शांत 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 है